one. It will be over 18 to enter. Lines will close at 10.45 p.m. tonight. And later on, we'll be calling someone live. And they must be there to take the call. Otherwise, you don't get the prize. Now, my next guest tonight is proof that just one person can make a difference in growing our economy and promoting Irish products. Three years ago, she went to work as a buyer in Dean & DeLuca, a New York institution and the high-end food chain in New York. At the time, they had no independent or artisan Irish products in stock. Three years on, they're selling over 25 different Irish products and they're giving loads of Irish producers a big break into America. Would you please welcome Diane Stopford. <laughs> Hi. How do you follow that? <laughs> Michael Bublé. You're much Come better on. looking than him. Uh, I think he's very charming though. I met him out the back. Very charming man. You worry. met him out the back? Yeah. Well, <laughs> the back door. <laughs> okay, let's move on very quickly. Um, so, so tell us about, you You have a big job in New York. Tell us about it. I do, it's a big city, a big job. Um, I work for Dean and DeLuca. Um, I started there actually as the chef in the store and then I moved on buying and I also oversee their international food and beverage programs for all their stores all over the world. So in, in Asia, in the Middle East, I'm about to open a store in, uh, in Istanbul soon. So, okay. so lots going on. And just to explain to people who might not know, just give us an idea about the Dean and DeLuca brand and what, it, what it's all about. So uh, Dean and DeLuca is, um, I think, one of the premier um, specialty grocery stores in the U.S. And really it was the first. We're 35 years old uh, this year. And uh, it was founded by uh, Giorgio and Joel Dean in New York in the 70s when uh, Soho was some neighborhood that no one would go to. Mm -hmm. Similar to the way Temple Bar was in Dublin, you know. And mm -hmm. these guys opened a cheese shop, which then grew into... Dean and DeLuca, and now to what it is today, which is actually a worldwide food brand. And, and your own story, actually, your food story, actually starts um, with Derry Clark in La Couvain, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, it's funny. Uh, I was uh, 15 in transition year in school, and uh, I was working with a photographer uh, doing a you know, work experience, and she said, I know you don't want to be a photographer. What do you want to do? And I said, I think I want to be a chef. She's like, my friend is a chef down the road. You're going to go in there, and next week you're going to spend a week with him. And it was Derry Clark, Derry and Sally Ann. So it was a great and introduction. How, how did you make the leap to America then? Uh, <clears throat> I studied a culinary arts degree at uh, Calvary Street, DIT. And then uh, a couple of days after finishing there, I headed off in a J1 to San Diego and stayed about seven and a half years. Okay. <laughs> so, and, then, uh, and then moved to New York. But we should clarify, ago. you are legal now. I have a green card, <laughs> yes, uh, yes, okay, permanent okay. resident. So now, so now that you're into Dean and DeLuca, basically, the Irish have a back door in there, so you're taking any old crap from Ireland. And ah, yeah, 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 you know, <laughs> rent to send in whatever you want. No, you know, I, I think the thing was, was that when I came and worked for Dean and DeLuca as a buyer, I knew what great food was coming out of Ireland, you know, and I knew that Ireland has great ingredients and, you know, maybe people were always looking to, you know, France or to Spain, you know, traditionally for, you know, gourmet food, but maybe they hadn't thought of Ireland, you know, growing up here, and this is where I got my love and passion for food, I knew there was great food there. So, you know, it started off when I was looking for a new smoked salmon supplier. Well, you know, why wouldn't I go to Ireland? We have great, you know, smoked salmon. Mm -hmm. and, then, and then things just kind of really grew from there. And did you, so you mentioned Ireland in the same breath as Italy and Spain. I suppose we, we all, we know now we grew up with great food, but like, you know, in a way at the time, it seemed like it was root vegetables and various bits of pigs was what we had. But, <laughs> but do you think that we, have a, that we have a cuisine and that we have products that are on a par with the kind of stuff that comes out of Spain and Italy? Definitely. And yeah. I mean, look at our cheeses. I mean, when you just look at the raw ingredients in Ireland, I mean, yes, we have all this rain, you know, running out tonight in the pouring rain, but, mm -hmm. you know, that does it produce... gives us all that know, green grass. Green isn't nut it? grass and, you know, great dairy products. And then I think, you know, great seafood, you know, great beef and lamb. I think, you know, when I come home, I eat so much to me, they don't eat a lot, you know, internationally, yeah. but I come home and I, you know, it's like put another steak on because it's, it's just great products. And once you have the raw ingredients, then you can run and do, you know, anything with those. And, and the people who are buying this stuff in Dean and Duke is, you know, we all know like the, the shops in all the Irish areas in New York sell the taters and the macadas right, and right. that kind of thing. But is it just the expats are coming and getting the Irish no, stuff? No, you or? know, I think when you, uh, that's a kind of misperception, when you're, you know, marketing Irish food, you're marketing it to Americans, not to Irish Americans. You know, people mm -hmm. just want great food. They don't really mind where it's from. You know, if it's really good food with a great story, 
Yeah. And, you know, it's, it's natural. You know, we're very lucky in Ireland. It's uh, GMO free, which is, which is a great thing now. So, you know, they just want great food. You know, I don't think we need to be thinking, you know, oh, it's the Irish American and it's the berries and the tato. You know, yeah. it's, it's a much wider range than that. And, and people are starting in America to really understand that Ireland is, you know, a great food destination. So, so, so somewhere here in Ireland, we could have a product that's the next, I don't know, Parma ham or, or Parmesan yeah, cheese. Yeah, you know what I had? Uh, I was home a few weeks ago and uh, I was in a store and I sampled smoked venison and it was almost like a prosciutto. Uh, yeah. And yeah. I'd never had that before and I was like, this is great. If I yeah, could bring yeah, it into the it. store, it's I would. Unfortunately, at, at the moment, we can't. But, you know, there's a, a great product that I'd never even tasted before. And, and tell me, what, what gives some of the Irish products that you're selling in Dean and Uh Well, we have... Uh, Pat Lawler and his Kilbeg and Parge, and I have to mm-hmm. say, I, I, I stand by it. Yeah, I, uh, I do have that every morning. My uh, wife does as well. She tells me that Pat's Parge is the creamiest. Apparently. It is. Yeah. I, I'm telling you. Stop Pat, it. You know, I've been down to Pat's farm and, and everything there. And uh, no, it's great. Uh, Lisa, yeah. my colleague from Mayo, Dina DeLuca, she calls him the soil whisperer. So, uh, uh-huh. and, uh, you know, Another uh, one of my favorites there is uh, Tom, who, you know, I yeah. saw on, on before in your show. And I think they're just doing great things and really yeah, well, innovative, too, with, w- with the Kyo's Crisps. Yeah, will you excuse me for a minute? I'll go over and have a chat with them. <laughs> sure, okay. sure, yeah. So, Pat, yes, my name. Uh, what's so special about your oats? Well, uh, <laughs> <laughs> for God's sake. <laughs> Well, Brendan, my oats uh, that we have here is just from my farm only, from no other farm. Okay. So you could describe it as a single malt. Gotcha. And, right. and it reflects the soil that's on my farm, the creaminess of it. That's what gives it its, its special taste. Yeah, and I know that, the, I, know, I know, genuinely know a lot of people who say that there is nothing like it. Tell me about when you got the phone call from Dean and DeLuca originally. Well, uh, June, June of last year, I was out on the tractor on the farm and I got a phone mm. call from... Uh, some shop in New York wanting to buy the porridge oats and uh, I said sorry I'm sold out but if you phone me back in September after the harvest I might have some more for you. (laughs) So you told Dean and DeLuca where to go? Not (laughs) not exactly but I had never heard of Dean and DeLuca. Right. So I scribbled down their name on the uh, the dust on the tractor and googled it later on (laughs) and I realised what I was after saying but they came back to me in September and it has all worked very well since. Keep them keen. Excellent. Okay. Uh, Seamus, you're, you're of course Seamus Sheridan's, we all know Sheridan's Cheesemakers, fantastic cheese shops and now you're out there in a lot of other outlets as well. It is a great story of, of I think, excellence in everything you do. Thank you very um, much. But we're not going to talk about cheese right now, it's actually the, the gap you kind of noticed was uh, for crackers. Yeah, well we, we traditionally over the years have sold an awful lot of crackers in our shops and to the brilliant restaurants we supply. And I suppose two or three years ago, we import all our crackers, that was the first point. And second, we, myself, my brother and the team in Sheridan's, we wanted to create a cracker that really went well with cheese. So we had a fantastic baker down in West Cork, Graham, um, Richard Graham Lee, and we started to work with him. And we developed two or three types of crackers, but we wanted something Irish. Mm. So I remember the day we were thinking about it, and uh, I have a fascination with buttermilk, so I told my little brother to mess around with buttermilk, and. Um, we invented Irish brown bread crackers. Brown bread crackers. Almost yeah. duplicated the way you make brown bread. But and to, and to, was it your mother's brown bread recipe originally you worked well, off? Well, <coughs> all our mother's brown bread recipes are the best, aren't they? Yeah, because well, yeah. <laughs> mine certainly is. I just put that right now. Um, fantastic. And I know that, so that's gone, they're gone international for you now as well. Yeah, but the nicest too. thing about it is <coughs> the flour comes from McCroom Oat Mills down in, uh, in the centre of McCroom, a beautiful yeah. old it, stone yeah, mill. Yeah, it is. It's all my mother will use. There's a local farm bread. called the Cronins. They supply us the buttermilk and the uh, butters from the local co-op, Bandon Co-op, and that's the only ingredients we use. So it's, it's a lovely story. Yeah, excellent. It is a great story. And of course, Tom, we know you. Uh, you were here last, just before Patrick's Day, with your shamrock flavoured crisps. That's right, yeah. And, uh, mm. and I gather Kyo's crisps has just grown and grown and grown since then, yeah? Um, yeah, we have done baby steps, slowly but surely. Um, I suppose, like, they, believe it or not, the company is actually a year old this week. We launched, we launched so you're our crisps. a year old? A year old this week, yeah, wow. yeah. yeah. Um, and it's, kind of, it's gone from strength to strength. Um, but it's mainly due to the, you know, the Irish consumer. They are so willing to support new Irish brands, new Irish companies that are starting up. You know, this time last year, 
I wasn't employing anybody making crisps. Now I'm employing 12. And that's directly as a result of the Irish consumer support new company. Fantastic. You know? And you know, I, th I think the question is as well, it's that whole competitive advantage of nations thing. If you have a very tough discerning market at home, as you all do, because Irish mm -hmm. people demand the best, well then when you go international, you have a product that's been honed with the most demanding consumers. Now, the, w one question though, are there gonna be crisps in the new year? Because I, all I see when I, when I turn on any agricultural programs today is <laughs> rotting in the ground. They can't.